Pulaski County, Arkansas, which is basically is right outside of Little Rock. He was born January the 28th, 1921. So you guys have to give them the mindset of before the Depression, before the Great Depression. This is many, many years ago. People acted different. They thought differently. They looked differently. They had very, very different goals set for themselves, if none. And he did not have any children, by the way. Big Jim, also known as James Wayman, Wayman, excuse me, had no children. Now his victim profile gets kind of kind of interesting here. So here's the victim profile. Fayrain Clemens, Clemens, excuse me, Fayrain Clemens. Who's named Fayrain anymore? I don't know. But it's I think it's a pretty name. I never even heard you that name before. Hey, can you imagine it's spelled F Frank A Y E R E N A? Faye Ring. I, I think it's beautiful. Maybe they called her Faye. But she was only 19 years old when he married her in 1941. So Jim or James Wayben Hall became Faye Ring's husband, Faye Ring Clements, in 1941 at the age, the, the very tender age of, of 19. So that was his wife. So let's keep this in mind. Now, the other victim, and I imagine these victims are pretty random Carl Hamilton. Then there was E.C. Adams and then Doyle Moharan. These people were just, hey, the wrong place at the wrong time, if you would say that, you know? And so anyway, let's go yeah. into a little bit about what has happened with this person from the time that we don't really know. The only thing that we really know is that he was very sensitive. So Big Jim was very sensitive about his mental Let's see. The authorities did a evaluation on him when he was taken in to custody and they believed that he was semi-retarded. And I don't know if that's an, in, a, oh, wow. I don't know if that was an, a, if that's not a politically correct way of saying the person has severe mental issues. I don't know. Um, but they, but experts argue that he was extremely mentally, in, mentally unstable, possibly due to a brain injury years later. OK. And so, like I said, he was an avid hitchhiker. He was known to kill people for their money. And you know what's really funny is that he never got he never was able to receive. He was never able to get more than three hundred dollars in all of his escapades. So basically, most of his murders were just random and they just ended up in murder. But there was no justification. There was no gratification. If you murder, if you murder someone and you set out to do that. Wouldn't you think that you're looking for something in return? Or Kai, do you believe that sometimes murder is so so much of an instant gratification that there is no thought process as to what am I going to get in return of this? Do you think that could happen with people just this murder just I mean obviously anything's anything's possible, but I think I mean I guess that's what that's that's if it if it went to that, you would call that what? Um I don't know. Uh, temporary insanity, maybe that would be temporary well, insanity because you're not really all, thinking it's about. It's always temporary insanity unless it's unless it's self defense. Because if it's not self defense, I think no. murder is temporary insanity. You don't think so? No. Um, example. Premeditated murder. You sat there and thought about it for months and months and planned it out. How is that temporary insanity? You were temporarily insane for six months. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that. Okay. So here's a few extras for you guys out there. So Jim, let's go back a little bit to get into the mind of a murderer, as I say. So Jim tried to escape military service when he was younger, around approximately of the age of 18 to 19, but he was drafted and dishonorably discharged only eight weeks after training. What does that tell you if a person is discharged? To so he wanted, he didn't want to go no. in, but of course, back in the right. day, you had to right. go in whether you wanted to mm -hmm. or not. But he really meant he didn't want to go in. So he was like, well, screw it. You made me sign up, but I ain't going. Exactly. I'm not going. <laughs> That's I'm what not happened. Job, okay. Tell me to do, give you. You can't <laughs> force me. <laughs> I agree. I, you know what? To be honest, I think I would have the same attitude now or then, because it's like I'm not going to do something I don't want to do. You can't make me. Do you remember when you were a kid? Did you ever have fights on the playground where some other bully kid would say, "Do this, do that, eat some sand," or just you know whatever they say, and the kid says, "You can't make me." 
No. You never experienced no. that? Okay. <laughs> no. Guess what? That's what he was saying. You can't make me. So shortly after that, he was dishonorably discharged, and he was married not long afterwards. Of course, we know that he was married to Favorite Clements. Now, here's where it really heats up. The relationship was stormy. They separated briefly within the first year. Can you believe that? Less than a year. I mean, I believe that. That happens it That does. happens to a lot of people. It really does happen. And it's a shame. It really is. But does it lead to murder, Kai? What you say? Necessarily? No? Not particularly? I mean... I don't think anything should lead to murder. So <laughs> how do you want me to answer that question? The end all, the end all, the end all. I mean, if I if I broke up with someone, I'd just I just go my own way. You go your own <laughs> way. Goodbye. <laughs> well, that's fine. <laughs> I don't think any of it should lead to murder. That's hilarious. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Okay, so let's go into their actual daily life. Let's do that. Let's take a little journey until just one day of their life, if we will. Okay? Oh, yeah. good Lord. Let's, let's, let's do this. Start. Okay, so one day, <laughs> Frank paid a visit to his father-in-law. Now, once again, he has a brand new bride, less than a year. She may have been very pretty, particularly. We don't know. But she was young. Favorine was young. Let's see. You know, they didn't really say a lot about Favorine's personality. But I'm just thinking that if you marry a man like <laughs> Big Jim, <laughs> you might be a little reckless yourself, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just a little, a little bit. A little cute little screw with a skirt on it missing, you know. And so he paid a visit to his father-in-law. And this is what he says, guys. Get this one. He states to the police officers that his wife has been promiscuous and missing and was missing for over, well, from home, for from their home, for over three days. Okay. So hmm. was she missing? She might have been. We don't know. Was she faking it? We don't know. Was he using this as some type of an excuse or something or an alibi? Because the authorities tell you from the very beginning that he didn't murder his wife, but was this part of the plot? We don't know. So the police were called out, but closed their investigation the following week. Can you believe that? Why? They didn't have enough information. So Kai, if someone reports a lover, a loved one lover, because they're married, a loved one. I mean, it's a, to me, okay, let's just let's just do that little poll. How many people say that a lover is, is someone that you're not married to? Or would you say a lover is just someone I you mean, How does that go? Uh, I mean, a lover is, I mean, someone you love could be your kid. Right. <laughs> you wouldn't call your kid a lover. But um, uh, I, I don't really hear people calling their husbands or wives their lovers. It's usually somebody you're in a relationship with or something like you're not, you're not married exactly. to them yet. Like a, like a little juicy side affair, side thing. What we say nowadays are a side check. I would say a side check was a lover or even a thought that you kind of, you know, Hey, you're home tonight. You know, yeah, that's some, something like yeah. that would be a lover. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree. So basically, well, you know, he's, he's a little more on the ignorant side of life, so he doesn't know what to, what to call it really. So he says that his wife has been promiscuous and was missing for home for over three days. The police were called out, but they closed their investigation the following week. Why? Because they didn't have enough evidence. What would you do? They don't have enough evidence. I mean, you know what I thought it was, Kai? At first I said, well, maybe they closed the investigation because he gave a hint that she had been promiscuous, which means that she could be willingly missing. Does that make sense? I hear what you're saying, but it'll make sense with gossiping people around a campfire or whatever. I don't know why they'd be around a campfire gossiping, but whatever. You know, gossiping people, but the police? Okay, okay. Okay, just because she was a cheater, then you're like, oh, screw yeah. that. <laughs> Case closed, Johnson. She was a cheater. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know. I that, doesn't, know. that doesn't make sense as a cop. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no. I totally agree with that. I just do. 
Okay. So, okay. So here, here we're going to move along here because this guy is just all over the place again. He's kind of reminds me of our, our last victim or victim. Uh, so, okay. So, so, so to stay on topic, to stay in the timeline, cause you like jumping back and forth from 1975 to 1932 up to 2010, back to 1975. Well, well, actually now we're in 1945, 1945 loggers discovered an abandoned car outside of Little Rock. A man, a man was found slumped over. There was a bullet to his heart. He was identified as the Camden Barber, basically the barber for that particular small town. And his name was Carl Hamilton. He's victim number one. Now to heat things up, let's heat things up a little bit, okay? Would you agree? Let's do that. Okay. So to heat things up, on February the 1st, a second vic a victim, E.C. Adams was his name. He vanished en route to his job at a local war plant which was common at the time. Now, his body was discovered in a nearby bush, a single bullet to his brain. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Crazy. Oh, my gosh. Talk about serial, serial killer. That seems to be something that they look for, your heart, your brain. How many serial, serial killers out there, if anyone can answer this with me, will shoot you in your foot or your, or your, your toe? <laughs> I mean, you never know. They might do that and then work their way up. It might be a torture, um, something, you know, to torture you with, a torture technique. That's what Absolutely. But, um, so yeah. you never know. Not a single bullet, though. This is only one. This man does single bullets. I mean, obviously, if it's a single bullet, they're going to do something that's going to be, you know, fatal. Yeah. Okay. Well, the brain is definitely fatal. I would agree. I would agree. <laughs> this is crazy. I mean. This is so crazy. Yeah. I, I know. <laughs> so that same day, trucker, here we go. Here's another victim. Now, everyone, just keep this in mind. We talked a lot in the beginning of the episode about the fact that he was a random hitchhiker. Okay. He had random hitchhiker. Well, he had random victims because he was a hitchhiker. So those who picked him up, you know, they were the ones that were looking on the side of humanitarian or humanitarianism to, you know, to support that and say, hey, you know, you need a ride, you don't have a car, you don't have, you don't have money, let me get you from point, point A to point B. So that was that. But. And usually it's younger from what yes, I understand, because I've never done absolutely. it, but it's usually younger yes. people who used to hitchhike. Yes. I think people still do it today, which I don't know why they would, but, you know, I still, I think, well, I guess, you know, Uber and stuff, no, they wouldn't be akin to hitchhiking because there's actually a paper trail like i you know you could check the app to see who last you went on an uber ride with so that wouldn't be the same as hitchhiking oh, no 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 not at all this is a lot more organized so kai i'm gonna make this one of my really quick stories but this is the truth about about hitchhiking i've never done that in my life but i think this counts as hitchhiking but i didn't think of it at the time so about five years ago, I was on late for work, first job at a place called CSI Experience in Las Vegas. Five years ago? I thought you were going to tell me some story about 20 no, years ago or no, something. No, it was not five years ago. No, it wasn't that long ago. Good Lord. Yeah, so, okay. So here's the, here's the whole point. I was driving a Nissan Versa. It was a, it was a car. It was a beautiful car, actually. But for whatever reason, I, it, you know, it needed some repair. So I thought, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So I decided to learn the bus system at least enough to get myself to work. I was working at a place called CSI in Las Vegas, which means that I was employed by CBS as a model. Um, I pretended to be an investigator to investigate a murder. That was my job. So, um, but I now imagine this, this is my first day of work and I was getting paid very well as a model for this exhibit. I did not want to be late. So my bus, once again, I don't know the bus system because I have a car. Hello. It broke down, but I didn't know that. So I was super, super, I was, it's like, I'm watching the, top, the clock ticking. It's getting super late. So a man pulls up, he pulls up, he has a foreign accent. No, nope. Nope. No, nope, I know, nope, I know, nope. I, know nope. I didn't, pull, I, know, <laughs> I didn't, you know, put two and two together at the time. He's just had a friendly smile. And I usually have a lot more sense than this, but I was desperate to get to work. So he says, oh, do you need a ride? I can help you. I said, no, you know what? I had three people pull up first. And I said, no, thank you. By the time this guy pulled up, it's like 25 minutes till work. I got to get in this car. Because I'm like, man, I'm not going to lose this job for nothing. I will kill before I lose this job. So by the time. This uh, person, you will be killed know, before you lose the job. I'll be killed before I lose the job. So I know I totally agree. So the, so the gentleman says, 
He says, no, 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 it is safe. You can come in, you can come in this car um, with me. It's okay. Where do you go? I said, not far. Nope. You